Hey there, Facebook audience, waiting for my Periscope audience to come up. Hey, there we go. How y'all doing? This is Prophet David Taylor here for my weekly uh, live prophetic word. And as you know, uh, every week I uh, pray and ask the Holy Ghost before I come on here, what does he want me to share with the body of Christ? What is the prophetic word that God has for his people today? So today is Easter Sunday. So I praise God that today is Easter Sunday, and I praise God for the risen Lord, the risen Savior. Um, I praise God that we even have a chance. We even have a chance to know the Lord, that we have a chance to know his word. We have a chance to have a relationship with Jesus because all of that is a blessing, and it's something you, took, you shouldn't take for granted, okay? Because the day is going to come where those chances are gone. The day is going to come where the word of the Lord is not going to be in the earth realm. The day is going to come where you're going to wish you could find a prophet. You're going to wish you could find a person of God to get a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord is going to be scarce. So I'm just thankful that on this Easter Sunday, this Easter Sunday, we can still go to church. We can still hear the word of God preach. We can still be around prophesying, preaching, pastors, evangelists, apostles, and all that's still flowing freely because that's not going to last forever. But that's not the word I have today. That's just my personal gratitude towards God. So, as always, like I tell you, I always pray before I come out because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. And the word that the Lord gave me for today is rise. Rise. And our scripture reference is based on Isaiah chapter 60. Okay, Isaiah is one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. And by the way, when you hear the phrase major prophets and minor prophets, minor prophets, is do, it does not mean that their message was less important. That is not what that means. Minor prophets means their books are smaller. That's all. So when it says major, Isaiah, Jeremiah, it's talking about very lengthy books. When it's talking about minor prophets, Amos, Obadiah, Habakkuk, Jonah, Micah, it just means they have smaller books. That's all. Three or four chapters. Zephaniah, Zechariah, it does not mean the message is less important, just so you know. So Isaiah, one of the major prophets, meaning he wrote a very long book, one of the major prophets in the Old Testament, chapter 60, and we're going to read through uh, several verses. But the word for today is rise. So I'm reading out of the NIV, New, New International Version. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Stop. What does that mean? That means that you hit a point where God has shown you a vision, where your light has come. You can see, because we all know there are points in our lives where we can't see. We can't see the Lord. We can't see ourselves properly. We don't have a proper vision for our future. But when your light has come, then it's time to rise and it's time to shine. It's time to let that vision come through. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Uh, my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, has been preaching extensively about the glory realm and about all the benefits that happen when you get in and stay in the glory of God. Okay? And this verse tells me that if you want the glory of God to rise in your life, your light has to come. And what that means is that you have to be lined up with God's purposes. You have to see it like God sees it. That's what it means that your light has come. It means I finally have the right vision. I can finally see. You've got to line up with God. And then it's time to rise and shine. And then the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Verse 2 says, See darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. Stop. What does that mean? That means that you can't always expect other people to see your vision. And it means that you shouldn't be surprised that people that don't know God are in darkness. Because many times you read the news and you see people doing things, and sometimes it's just a head scratcher. Sometimes you have to wonder, what are they doing? The reason they do stuff like that is because they're in darkness. They don't know the Lord. Okay? You can't make good decisions if you don't know the Lord. I'm sorry. I wish that weren't true. <laughs> Everybody wishes that weren't true. But the fear of the Lord, as it says in Proverbs, is the beginning of wisdom. You have not begun to be wise until you've learned to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you've got no relationship with God, you cannot make wise decisions apart 
from God. It's not going to happen. Okay? So, see, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. Thick darkness. That means that people that don't know God are in thick darkness. There's a very heavy layer of darkness covering their vision. That's why they can't see what to do. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Okay? So the glory of God is rising upon you. That's the second time the, the passage has said that. That the glory of God is rising upon you, and his glory appears over you. That means the glory of God is hovering over you as your covering, as your protection, and also as a signal to the rest of the world that God is the head over your life, and God is your shield, your protection, your front guard, your rear guard. That's what happened when the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Verse 3, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. What does that mean? It means exactly what it says. Nations will come to your light. You will have international traffic. A lot of people are asking, how do I establish an international business or an international ministry? Or how do I go, go, go global? The way you go global is, number one, you got to have the light coming in your eyes and your light. You've got to be on the same page with God. You have to be in agreement and in obedience with the Lord. And then the glory of the Lord has to rise upon you and have his glory appear over you. Because whenever you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, God marks it with his glory. God marks it with his power. God marks it with the supernatural so everyone else can know that's him. Okay? So then when it says nations will come to your light, that is how you go global. That is how you go international. That is how you blow up. Okay? Because once the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, once you have the right vision and once your light has come, other people are going to see it. That's why it says arise and shine. Other people are going to see it. And the word of the Lord that he gave uh, for me today to release to the saints was, it's time for you to rise. Okay? Okay? But other people are going to see it, and that's how you draw people to you. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, when you get in line with that purpose, and you invest yourself in it, that's right, praise God, you invest yourself in it, and you grow in what you do, and you become good at what you do, and you learn how to flow in your anointing, and you let God shape you and polish you, and the supernatural power of God is flowing through your life in finances, in wisdom, in physical health, in miracles, in healing, in forgiveness, in relationships, other people are going to be drawn to you. And other people are going to be drawn to your life and they're going to want to know what's the secret. It's not a secret. It's Jesus Christ. It's a relationship with the Savior because and making him my Lord. I've surrendered my will to him. I'm being obedient to what he tells me to do. And then he releases his glory over my life. Okay? It's Jesus. Okay? Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. What happens at dawn? Dawn is sunrise. That means as you are on the come up, as your light burns brighter and brighter, there are going to be kings of the earth that are drawn to what you're doing. That means the head of multinational conglomerates. That means the heads of state, like governors. It means senators, congressmen. It means presidents. It means actual kings over countries where countries are still operating with a monarchy. Okay? It means people of high positions and power are going to be drawn to you on the come up, to the brightness of your dawn, your sunrise. Okay? Then in verse 4, verse four it says, Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. What does that mean? That means that if you want reconciled relationships with your children, you might be estranged from your children. You know what's going to draw them back to you? When you get on the come up. <laughs> There's nothing more attractive than the glory of God. There's nothing more attractive than the light of God. And there's nothing more attractive than the success that comes with it. And it's that success, that glory, that light, that will draw even wayward children back to you. Don't you know that if you are a godly person and you know the Lord, 
If your children decide to walk away and live a secular or carnal life, that's going to catch up with them at some point. At some point, that's going to catch up with them and they're going to hit a wall and they're going to need somebody that knows how to get a prayer through because you can only fool around with the devil for so long. It's going to produce death. It doesn't matter how it starts. It doesn't matter how your sin habit starts. It doesn't matter how you start down the path with the devil. You can only fool with sin for so long. It's going to produce death. You can only fool with Satan for so long. It's going to produce death. And when that happens, they're going to want to find somebody who knows how to get a prayer through. They're going to want to find somebody who knows how to talk to the Lord where the glory of God is in their life, where the light of God is in their countenance, where the, the word of truth is in their mouth, and they're going to come find you. Okay, even if it takes years. So that's why I want to encourage you parents, because God is telling you when you rise and shine and you want to come up, that's what's going to draw your children back to you. Your sons come from afar. You might be greatly estranged from your children. They're going to be drawn back to your life when you get on the come up. That's why your relationship with God is the most important thing. Do what the Lord is telling you to do and watch his glory bring all these blessings in your life. Verse 5. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. What is that? That's the spirit of reconciliation. That's that long lost daughter, that long lost son, that long lost relationship that you've been praying about and aching about and crying about for years has finally been restored to your life. Okay? Then it says in the same verse, verse 5, the wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Once again, that's talking literally about international commerce. It's talking about overseas business. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. It's talking about going global, uh, brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Understand that? It's talking about your business expanding in ways you never thought of before. Because remember, all businesses that are at present international businesses started at a level and they grew. Okay? Uh, then it says in verse 6, Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah. Camels and sheep and flocks and herds in the Bible always represents wealth because they were more agrarian society. It represents wealth. Okay? And resources. All and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Stop. Gold and incense. Okay. Those are the tools. Those are the rewards. Those are the gifts of kings. Precious metals and incense. Okay. That means that you're not going to be poor. You're not going to be barely making it. You're not going to be scraping by. You're going to have the gifts and the tools of kings. And proclaiming the praise of the Lord. There it is again. That means people are seeing that light. They're seeing that shining. They're seeing that glory. And they're giving God praise. And you should too. And I'm going to read this last verse, verse 7. All Keter's flocks, flocks again represents prosperity. That's talking about sheep. All Keter's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Naboth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. And I will adorn my glorious temple. That last phrase, I will adorn my glorious temple. What does that mean? That means that God is going to dress you up. And he's going to dress you well. Because in the New Testament, we are his temple. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. So when God says he's going to adorn his glorious temple, he's talking about us. God is going to dress you up. God is going to get you some new clothes. God is going to make you look good. God is going to lighten your countenance. Okay? God's going to adorn you. And when God does that, it's so that other people looking at you and looking at your life can see the presence of God upon you, can see the Lord on your life and give him praise and give him glory. So right now, I just want to encourage those of you that are listening to this word to understand, praise him, that's right. I want you to understand that it's time for you to rise. This is your time, this is your season, this is your year. Don't hold back. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to move forward. If you don't have all the resources you need, move forward in faith and use the resources that you have. But it's time for you to rise. It's time for you to, to do that teaching, to write that book, to build that building, to start that investment portfolio, to seek that new relationship, to buy that home, to, to, to get a promotion on your job, 
whatever it takes to get to where you know that God is calling you to be. It's time for you to do that. Huh. Sometimes in life, we try to do things prematurely. Premature things are when you are asking for the car keys and you're only 13 years old. You're not ready for the car yet at 13 years old. Sometimes in life, we do things too late. Okay? You, you're trying to have your first baby in life at 57. Okay? Well, probably should have had your babies younger. Okay? You're probably not going to have 20 kids if you start at 57. I know, never say never, nothing's impossible, but you're on the other side of childbearing in many cases for a lot of people. <coughs> and sometimes, you know, it's late. Sometimes there was a school opportunity that you had, and you didn't take advantage of it when you had it. Then you try to come back to it, and things have changed. School might have changed, tuition might have gone up. I was in a situation one time where I had been waiting to get with this professor for years. I should have got with this, this professor way back years before, but I didn't go to that school when I should have. When I finally got around to going to that school, the fall I was going to go, the professor died. The professor died right before class has started. That means that I'm not going to get a chance in this life to sit under the teaching of that professor because I should have gone when I first had the opportunity. So I did come back around, but I was too late to get the blessing I could have got from that teacher. See, so sometimes in life we're premature, and sometimes in life we're too late. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because when you get a prophetic word from the Lord, and the Lord is telling you to move now, that means you need to move right now. That means you don't need to delay. Don't miss your season. Okay, this is the first day of the second quarter of 2018. This is April 1st, so this is the first day of quarter two. We got through January, February, and March. So if the Lord is telling you to move now, that this is now in your season, don't be waiting to September. Don't be waiting till the fall. Don't wait until Thanksgiving. Move right now. Now's the time. That's what I'm trying to impress upon you. Because if not, you can, might miss your window. And when you miss windows in life, there is no guarantee those windows are going to come back around. To give you an example, uh, consider people that are Olympic-level athletes. <clears throat> when you're an Olympic-level athlete, depending on your sport, you've only got so many chances, okay? Depending on what your sport is, you've only got so many times to compete on an Olympic level. So if you get hurt right before the Olympic Games, or if you get sick right before the Olympic Games, you've got to wait four more years, and who knows what can happen in four more years. You might not heal. You might get hurt again. You might develop a chronic illness. Uh, who knows what can happen. And you don't want to have to wait four more years if you've got a shot. So if you've got a shot to go to the Olympics, you need to go while the going is good. You need to get it while the getting is good. That's what I'm trying to impress upon you now. That when you get a prophetic word from the Lord and the Lord is telling you that now is the time to move, don't be delaying. Okay? Don't be dragging your feet. Get up, get on it, and take advantage of the open door of the season that you're in because now is the time for you to rise right now. So I don't want you to be in a position, all those of you that are listening to me right now or that watch this replay, I don't want you to be in a position in a year from now when you're realizing God was telling me to make an investment last year and now that investment has blown up and I missed it. Could have had a whole new income stream, but I didn't move when God told me to move. God gave me an idea for a song, or God gave me an idea for a book, or God gave me a networking connection where I could uh, buy a piece of real estate, and I was going to get a real good deal on it, but I was dragging my feet, and I didn't move, and now the property, the price of that property has gone up, the value of that property has skyrocketed, and you had a chance to buy it, and you didn't. Okay, so if the Lord is telling you to move now, now's the time to move with no more delay. Now is the time to rise. I can't impress that upon you enough. All right, so I'm going to release a prophetic word and then we're going to close out in prayer. For my hope, behold, my people, I have spoken to you through the mouth of my prophet to tell you that now is the time to rise. 
but I will speak to you directly in my private quiet time with you to give you detailed instructions on what to do, to show you how to invest, where to move, where to live, what to buy, what to build. I will show you what to do and when to give you opportunities to rise and shine so that my glory might both undergird you and cover you as you move in the purpose that I have created you for. So do not delay, do not delay and do not hesitate, but gird up the loins of your mind, rise, shine, get in my flow, and watch me manifest my glory in your life so that the Gentiles and the unbelievers may be drawn unto you, and they and you will sing my praises and give me the glory, and they will ask, how can we become a part of your God, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. All right, so if there aren't any prayer requests, if nobody needs me to pray for anything, I'm not seeing any prayer requests on my screen, so I'm very encouraged by that word, uh, by the teaching, by the prophetic word. I'm very encouraged, encouraged in my own life, so we'll pray a closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for Jesus, thanking you for... Uh, the season of rising, thanking you for the teaching of your word about how your glory will cover us and your glory will rise upon us and that nations will be drawn to us and kings will be drawn to us and the wealth of the seas, international commerce, overseas trade, uh, flocks and herds, prosperity. So many things become a uh, part of our lives when your glory rises, when our light has come, when we see like you see, when we're in agreement with you, when we are in obedience to the word of God. So we thank you for it, God. We're excited for it. We're excited for it. We thank you for this new day of rising. And we want to take advantage of every opportunity that you've given us. So we give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we're moving forward by faith with our ear towards heaven so we can hear what thus says the Lord and we can obey and walk in the fullness of this rising. We thank you for it and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, this is Easter Sunday. I hope you enjoyed your time in church today. I hope you enjoy your time with your family. I'm going to go spend some time with my family. So as always, I count it an honor and a privilege to come and bring you the prophetic word. God bless all of you that hear this word and receive it and, and walk in it. And you know I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live and Periscope. And then I post both videos so you can always watch the replay. Okay? God bless you so much, and I'll see you same time next week. Have a great Easter Sunday and a blessed week.